I should uh, now describe the last part of my book, which, dis which considers the most radical dreams about change, those espoused by the transhumanists, those people who want to change humanity beyond what nature has given us. They have two main dreams. One of them is cryonics. That's the practice of freezing yourself after you die in the hope that some advanced civilization of the future will resurrect you. And the other is more extreme. It says, let's forget about our bodies. Let's transfer our minds to computers. Let's, let's live forever, happily ever after inside a computer as a simulation, a simulated me. And that's called mind uploading. These are, these are science fiction dreams, right? And people argue, well, is it really possible? If you have a beer or two, you can get to a nice argument about whether this will ever be possible. <laughs> and my point in this book is to in introduce a dose of science into science fiction. Can we imagine a way that we could scientifically test these wild claims of cryonic, cryonics and uploading? And I propose that through the idea of the connectome, we could test. We can't prove that they will work, but we can imagine ways of disproving them. And that's, that's when you know you're actually on the way to science. When you, can have, when you have the possibility of disproving something, of falsifying it, then it's really science. So if it's really true that my memories are stored in my connectome, then the critical issue for cryonics is whether their procedure for preserving the brain preserves the connectome. We know that the brain starts to fall apart when you die, very rapidly. If the connectome has been erased because the wires disintegrated or the synapses are not staying together, then our advanced civilization of the future might resurrect the body, but there's no way it would recover the memories. And the same goes for uploading. The, the only chance that the uploaders have for this to work in the next century would be a connectome-based simulation of the mind. We'd have to take your brain, slice it up really thinly, <laughs> extract the connectome, and then simulate your network of neurons. That's the only plaus remotely plausible, I wouldn't even say plausible, only remotely plausible method that people discuss. And so it's critical to address the question, is the connectome enough? Maybe the connectome is necessary, but is it sufficient to simulate you?